Hi, I'm James the Light Guy, and today we're taking a look at a set of Oslamp LED replacement headlight bulbs. This is one of the many model variants that they offer. These ones are in the 9006 bulb type. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. All right, we get two bulbs and instructions with uh, actual photo pictures in there. And some basic instructions and information. One of the things that's interesting here is number eight. Let's see if I can zoom in. Here we go. You can see number eight here. Japanese two ball fan, high speed heat, well, heat dissipation fan with 12,000 RPM. If we take a look at these lights, there is no fan. There's a decent size heat sink here, but there is no cooling fan. So already the uh, specifications on the paperwork can't be trusted. But anyway, we'll do our standard review starting with the plug. This has a standard 9006 electrical connector. However, the thick walls are surprisingly soft. Next, we have virtually no strain relief for the wires here. And actually, it's a pretty decently thick rubber uh, sheath around the internal wires. So I don't have much to complain about there but there is no strain relief where it enters the back of the bulb here. Then we just have a stamped metal or punched metal cap here on the back with an extruded aluminum heat sink. All of this has been anodized a metallic gray. And we have the standard 9006 base adapter made out of some sort of, it feels like, a fiberglass reinforced plastic. And there is a set screw in there to lock it in place. Because when installing this in a housing, you have to put it in and twist to lock. And without that screw, you wouldn't be able to properly secure this in the housing. Next, we have the vertical shaft, which appears to be a single extruded I-beam of aluminum, if I can get the focus right. It's hard to see there. There we go. And a panel on each side. These have an aluminum substrate rather than copper so not as good for heat transfer. And the chip sets are just riveted through the PCB onto the center support shaft. And we have two COB or COB LEDs uh, chips here. I'm not expecting as great performance as our CSP chips that we've seen on many of the other bulbs recently. So let's grab our power supply and see what kind of current this thing draws. All right, we have our power supply plugged in and hooked up here. We have a clearly visible ground and positive marking on there. And when we turn on our power supply, we get about 0.9 amps and dropping at 14.4 volts. That puts this at about 12 watts and 
dropping. All right, um, taking a look at it in the free air, it is not very bright. You can see in some of our other videos when I hold it with the light or the chip directly facing the camera, the camera can't recognize the, uh, the display there. But even if I get this real close to try and overpower, oh, there it goes. I have to get it real close to get the same level of intensity as the other bulbs. Next thing I want to comment on is the heat transfer. There is a decent amount of heat being produced from these chips and it is making its way down to this heat sink. However, without airflow, there doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, dissipation from that heat sink and it's starting to hurt my hands and this has only been on for a few seconds now. All right, I'm gonna shut it down and ow. Put that down on the silicone pad so it doesn't burn anything. Let's grab our light measuring box and see what our brightnesses are. All right, we have our light measuring box set up. We're gonna turn on the power here and set this to times 10 as we do for all of our tests. We'll start by inserting this with the uh, the darkest portion facing the sensor which is here and then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so that the chip is directly facing the sensor and see what the max brightness is. Let's turn our power supply back on and down we go. Looks like the low end is 142 and dropping as the power stabilizes. Going up to the bright end, we are at 410 and dropping. So this is not a very impressive light. Even our halogen bulb, I'll put a link to that test in the uh, description below, was significantly brighter and more even than that. I don't have a housing currently available to do a beam pattern analysis for projector and reflector, so we'll have to hold that off for another day, but as I'm sure that you guys can guess, with a bulb that is this dim, um, it really not worth testing anyway. So this is one of the types of Auslamp LED bulbs. This particular design I wouldn't recommend getting but they do have other styles that I have yet to test. So we're not shutting down the brand yet, but if you see one of these, uh, just move along, nothing to see here. I'd like to thank our patrons for supporting the channel and making videos like this possible. If you'd like to support the channel too, you can visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash jamesthelightguy. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Do all the internet things. Like, share, subscribe. And until next time, I'm James the Light Guy.